Hi there, this is T Geometry, and I'm just going to uh, walk you through a few geometry examples. Uh, first off, let's start with the one at the top. If a circle has a diameter of 18 inches, what is the circumference? Well, the equation for circumference is C equals pi times D. Well, since we know the diameter, pi times 18 inches, which is 3.14 about, and times 18, which, if you work out the math, that'll equal 56.52. Great. So now, what is the area of the triangle above? Now notice that the triangle above is 6 centimeters tall and 11 centimeters wide. Well, what if you took this half of the triangle and you moved it over here to fill in this space? What if you did that? Then it would look something along the lines of this, something like this. There's your cut, just to give you a visual. And it'd be 5.5, .5, half of the 11, right? And 6 centimeters. Centimeters. Which, the area of a square, which is what it's making now, is just 6 times 5.5, .5, which equals 33 centimeters squared. Now, what I want you to realize is that while this one will fit together like a puzzle piece, um, not all triangles will do that, but you can still use this basic rule of base times height. Um, and here, let me just kind of walk you through a, a quick, odd-looking triangle, and you'll see it something more shaped like this. And it, just so you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you can have... Uh, Let's say this was 15 over here, and this was 5. And this one is 5 as well. So now, let's just label them. You have area A, and you have area B. So, for area A, you get 5 times 15 times 1 half because 5 times 15 would be this whole square but that's not what we're doing, we're doing half of it, the triangle so just multiply it by half so 5 times 15 and then you multiply it by a half that will equal 37 and a half then we do the B portion which is just 5 times 5 times 1 half again and that equals, survey so says, 12 and a half. 5 times 5 is 25, and half of that is your 12.5. Uh, then you can just add them up together. And that way you can really just break it down into triangles, which are easier to swallow, essentially. So, um, when you add that up together, that's going to equal around 50. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, you know, I know that there's another way of doing this. Uh, I'm just not exactly sure how it is. And the reality is you don't need to split it up like this. You don't need to. Um, you can actually just ignore it and do base times height times one half for all triangles. So, let's try it again. Uh, I'll just call it C which is just going to be base times height, which are base, or total base, is 20. So I can do 20 times 5 times 1 half, which also equals 50. Simpler. So just remember, base times height, base times height, times 1 half. I'll cloud it for you guys this time. So let's move on down to these little angles right here. Um, this one 
I just want to point out that basically, usually when someone's talking about positive angles, they always go counterclockwise. And so, for this one right here, uh, you realize that it almost does, uh, it, it goes around three-fourths around the point, which, going the exact opposite direction, as in, like, to the left, that would be 180 degrees. But that's not our case right now. Ours is going down, so essentially it goes 90, 180 degrees to go the opposite, and then turns 90 more. So 180 plus 90, that's 270. So just realize that um, you just keep going in 90 degree turns, but you always go counterclockwise, and you add when you go counterclockwise. So now. The one just to the right here, I just wanted to point out that what if they had the arrow pointing right? This arrow is actually meant to, um, it's meant to show, um, which way is positive. But, if you have a new teacher or a teacher that really just doesn't know whole lot about math, then they'll say, no, 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 that direction's always negative, and then you just have to kind of take his word for it. So, um, if that were the case, um, if it was positive, they were following the rules, then the answer would be 90 degrees here. But, if they're following the universal math rules, then, uh, or, or standards, or or whatever you want to call it, um, then this would actually be negative 90 degrees. And technically, the same thing as our 270 that we had before. So, uh, let's shift on down to the last problem here. Um, imagine these two right here are straight, straight lines. And they go on forever, but they intersect at one point and at one of these points we notice that it's 30 degrees. Now, one thing that you need to realize is that um, angles are always the same, uh, opposite of each other when they're straight. Um, when it's two straight lines intersecting, opposite angles are equal. So the, the top and bottom are both equal to 30, and thus the left side is also equal to the right side. So, just a little factoid to kind of use uh, whenever you come up with a kind of complex problem. Um, but you can kind of just ignore almost like the lower half right here and just work with what you got at top. You can see that the straight line, we know along a straight line, from the, from the, the point of intersection, that is almost like a pivot point and from straight line to straight line that's going to be 180 degrees so 180 degrees along here it's 180 degrees so 180 degrees equals 30 degrees plus x degrees well solve for x you got 150 degrees pretty simple. It just takes some little know-how. So anyway, uh, I hope this helps you out and good luck on the test.